Hi everyone, welcome back to another IB Economics Lanterna video. This is the third video in the series. In the first video, we talked about the concept of demand. In the second video, we talked about the concept of supply. Now we're going to be putting these two concepts together to talk about the market equilibrium and the role of the price mechanism in economics. So let's get straight into it. If you remember from our first video, the demand curve is just a downward sloping straight line and the supply curve is just an upward sloping straight line. So let's put these two curves on the same graph and we can see how they interact. Here you can see the supply and demand on the same graph. The first thing you notice is that they intersect at one point. Let's call that point, point A. What's interesting about point A? Well, let's go back to what supply and demand mean. Supply shows the amount of t-shirts in this case produced, right? How many t-shirts are produced in this market? The demand curve shows how many t-shirts are bought in this market, right? So. At point A, the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded are equivalent. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that at that specific price level, we'll call that PE for equilibrium price. At that price level, all the t-shirts that are produced are going to be sold. So we say that the market clears or the market is in equilibrium. This level of price ensures that all the t-shirts that are produced are going to be bought. Now, what's so interesting about an equilibrium? Well, one of the most interesting things is that it's self-writing. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, suppose the price is at some other price level. Instead of being at the equilibrium price, it might be up at P1. Let's suggest that price is all the way up here, meaning you know, the price of t-shirts is quite high. What can you notice about this situation? Well, at that price, how many t-shirts are demanded? Well, let's look at that price and look at where that falls on the demand curve. You can see at that high price, P1, this is the level of quantity demanded. We'll call it QD for quantity demanded. That's how many t-shirts are going to be bought. How many t-shirts are produced at this high price though? How many t-shirts are produced at P1? Well, that's all the way over here. We'll call that QS for quantity supplied. So what can you see at this high price, at the price of P1? Well, the quantity supplied is much larger than the quantity demanded. The amount of t-shirts produced is much higher than the amount of t-shirts sold. We call this excess supply. Now, what does excess supply mean? Well, we've produced way too many t-shirts for the amount that we're able to sell as producers. Now, this isn't a good situation for anyone. The price is high and also suppliers are producing way too many t-shirts and not being able to sell them all. So what do you think producers might want to do? Well, the natural thing would be to start lowering the price. Why is that natural? Well, as they lower the price closer and closer to PE, you're going to see that the quantity supplied starts going downwards towards the equilibrium. At the same time, the quantity demanded is going to start falling towards the equilibrium as well. Why? Well, the price is becoming cheaper, so people are more willing to buy t-shirts. Now, this process is going to continue until we reach the equilibrium again. So what have we just learned? Well, if producers, for whatever reason, set an abnormally high price, they decide to set the price of P1 rather than PE, then eventually the price is going to start falling again because we want to get rid of this excess supply that the abnormally high price has created in the market. Now, let's suppose that instead of producers setting too high of a price, they set too low of a price. Suppose they set the price P2, where P2 is below the equilibrium price. Let's suppose that price is somewhere over here. Well, let's look at what the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied is at this price. Well, the quantity supplied is wherever you can see the supply curve is at that price. So we'll label that QS for quantity supplied. The quantity demanded, on the other hand, is much higher, all the way over here, quantity demanded. Now, what can you see in this situation? 
Well, the quantity demanded is much higher than the quantity supplied. Let's think about how that might look in real life. If the quantity demanded, the amount of people who are willing and able to buy the good is much higher than the actual production of that good, well, that would be like you going to a store and tons of people wanting to buy a certain good, in this case a t-shirt, but the store only having a few t-shirts to sell. Now, this doesn't seem like a good situation for anyone. The store is only able to sell a few t-shirts and quite a few customers go to the store but aren't able to buy the good because of the limited stock available. So, what do you think is going to happen in this situation where we've got excess demand? Too much demand, not enough supply. Well, if we've got excess demand, the logical thing for producers to do would be to start raising the price. Why is that? Well, suppose a business sees tons of people coming in wanting to buy their t-shirts. The logical thing would be to start raising their prices. So the P2 is going to come closer and closer to PE. When that happens, the quantity demanded, which was extremely high before, will start falling because not as many people are going to want to buy the t-shirts when the price starts increasing. At the same time, we'll see the quantity supplied start increasing as producers will be more likely to want to sell t-shirts when the price is slightly higher. So you can see in this situation as well, when we started at a price below the equilibrium price, we get this natural tendency for the price to want to come back to the equilibrium price. Eventually, we're going to end up at point A again, the equilibrium. So that's what I mean by the equilibrium being self-riding. No matter where the price starts in the market, whether it starts at P1 above the equilibrium or P2 below the equilibrium, eventually there's going to be a tendency for the price to come closer and closer to the equilibrium price. So to recap, in any market, because of the self-riding nature of the equilibrium, the price will eventually tend to the equilibrium price and the quantity will eventually tend to the equilibrium quantity so that the market produces where the supply and the demand intersect. Now, let's suppose there's a situation in which the demand curve shifts outwards to somewhere over here. Now, what might be a reason that the demand curve shifts outwards? If you want to review that, you can go back to video one. But one reason might be that t-shirts just became really fashionable. So suddenly everyone wants to buy t-shirts. The demand for t-shirts is much higher than it was before. So the demand curve has shifted outwards from D to D prime. Now, the question is, what's gonna happen to the equilibrium in this situation? Well, when the demand curve shifts outwards, initially the price stays the same, right? So we've got this new demand curve, but the old price, the equilibrium price with this new demand curve. Now, what can you notice? Well, in this situation, the demand, the new demand is all the way out here. We'll call that QD prime, the new quantity demanded of t-shirts. Whereas the supply, the supply of t-shirts is still at QE. The supply of t-shirts hasn't changed yet. So t-shirts have become more fashionable, but producers haven't responded to that change yet. Now, what can you see? Well, in this situation, we have once again an excess demand for t-shirts. The demand has just increased, but producers haven't started producing more t-shirts to fill that demand yet. Now, what did we say about the self-riding nature of the market equilibrium? Well, whenever you have an excess demand or excess supply, the price will automatically adjust to create this new equilibrium. So in this situation where the demand for t-shirts has just increased, producers are going to start increasing the price. Why is that? Well, by increasing the supply, we're going to be moving closer and closer to this new equilibrium point that we'll call B. At the same time, because of the price increasing, the quantity demanded is going to start slowly falling because when t-shirts become more expensive, the amount of people wanting to buy t-shirts will fall. Now, this is going to keep happening until we reach this new equilibrium point, point B, at which the equilibrium quantity is QE prime and the price is PE prime. 
What you can notice is as a result of the demand curve shifting outwards, the equilibrium price has increased and the equilibrium quantity has increased. We end up in a situation with a higher quantity of t-shirts produced and a higher price for t-shirts. At this equilibrium, the excess demand is wiped out because we've ended up in a new situation where the supply curve meets the new demand curve. So we're in just a state of new equilibrium. The same thing would happen if the demand curve were to, for example, shift inwards. So suppose the demand curve has shifted inwards because suddenly t-shirts became a lot less fashionable. People no longer demand as many t-shirts. Well, what's going to happen? Well, re let's remember, at first, the price stays the same. So the demand curve is shifted inwards from D to D prime, but at first, the price stays pinned at PE. At this price level, you can now see that the quantity supplied, which is at QE, is higher than the quantity demanded, given the new demand curve that's shifted inwards. If the quantity supplied is higher than the quantity demanded, meaning producers are producing more t-shirts than they're able to sell, we're in a situation of excess supply. Now, if you remember, when we're in a situation of excess supply, what should producers do in order to get rid of this excess supply? Well, the logical thing would be to start reducing the price. If producers have a bunch of t-shirts that they need to and want to sell, but they're not able to sell them, they should just start lowering their price. What would lowering the price do? Well, if the equilibrium price starts falling, well, then the supply is going to start falling as well, right? Producers aren't willing to produce as many t-shirts if they can't sell them for as high of a price. At the same time, the quantity demanded will start increasing because demanders will be more likely to buy t-shirts now that they're becoming cheaper. So what do you end up with? We end up with a new equilibrium. We'll call this point C. At that point C, we have this new equilibrium price that we'll call PE prime. And we have this new equilibrium quantity. We'll call it QE prime. And at this point, we've erased the excess supply and we're in a new state of equilibrium. So what have we learned? Well, equilibriums are self-writing, meaning that whenever the price is incorrect or not at the equilibrium price, there'll be natural forces by producers to increase or decrease the price to get to the new equilibrium price. On top of that, no matter how the demand curve shifts or the supply curve shifts, we're going to end up in a new equilibrium where the supply curve meets the demand curve. So now that we understand how markets adjust to form new equilibria when demand curves or supply curves shift, we need to understand the role of the price mechanism. The price mechanism explains that producers see the signaling function of prices and the incentive function of prices. Suppose that the demand curve increases, the demand for a certain good is higher than it was before. This gives a signal to producers that consumers are willing to buy this good, right? There's higher demand. The demand curve has shifted outwards. This is signaling to producers that consumers would like to buy more of this good. Since we assume that producers are rational and that they're going to be doing what's best for them to maximize their profits, they're going to be incentivized to raise the prices, produce more of the good and devote more resources towards producing those goods. So naturally, by the demand for a certain good shifting outwards, we get signals being sent to producers and incentives for producers to raise the price and to start producing more of the good in order to fill this extra demand that this good has recently gotten. The key thing to note is that no one told the producers to raise the price or to increase the quantity of production for this good. Adam Smith, who is a famous economist, calls this the invisible hand, where the economy naturally moves resources and factors of production to make sure that all markets are in equilibrium. So if the demand for a certain good increases, then the supply for that good will also increase in order to fill this demand, the invisible hand. 
So to recap, the few things that we need to know about market equilibria are that the market equilibrium is self-riding. No matter what, if the price is above the price equilibrium, then the price will naturally fall to the price equilibrium. If the price is below the price equilibrium, then the price will start rising to meet the equilibrium price. And on top of that, if the demand curve shifts outwards or inwards, or if the supply curve shifts outwards or inwards, we're gonna see the price adjust to form a new equilibrium because of the role of the price mechanism and the invisible hand that the economies play in all these market to form these new equilibria. That's all for today. In the next video, we're gonna start introducing the concepts of elasticities. We're skipping over market efficiency for now, but we'll come back to it in a few videos time. So stay tuned for a video about elasticities. See you then.